want to learn the first 10 handing exercises, but you're not sure how to start? I'm going to show you how to play each of the first 10 handing exercises at a slow tempo, so you can use these amazing finger exercises to improve your piano technique. For each exercise, I'm going to explain what's going on, and then I'll play it for you at 60 beats per minute. Let's get started! The first handing exercise is one of the simplest and most enjoyable ones to play. It works on increasing the flexibility between the 4th and 5th fingers of the left hand going up the keyboard, and then it stretches the 4th and 5th fingers on the right hand going down. Think of this exercise as a twist on a pentascale. Instead of playing a 5 finger scale as you normally would, skip the 2nd note like this. This will reverse itself when you come back down the keyboard. Exercise number two is a twist on exercise number one. You're still going to skip the second note like in exercise number one, but instead of playing the five finger scale up and down, it will have a mini trill in there instead. Pay close attention to the fingering written on the score and play really slowly at first until you get the hang of the pattern. With slow, careful practice, you'll master the concept faster than you might expect. If this video has been helpful to you so far, it would mean a lot to me if you could hit the like button to help this video spread to other pianists like you. Exercise number three is a variation of exercise number two. We still skip the second note of the five finger scale, but instead of the mini trill that we had in number two, you're going to have a turn. This means we'll be going down and then up again. Of course, this will get reversed when you descend in the second half of the exercise. Exercise number four, we leave behind the five finger scale pattern that we've used in the previous three exercises, and we're going to try something new. This exercise specifically targets the third, fourth, and fifth fingers of each hand, and generally works on the flexibility of your whole hand. You'll start with alternating between the starting note and the next note, and then you'll reach up a third, and then go to the sixth above the starting note. Then you'll cascade down to the third again. Like the other exercises, this one gets reversed when you go down the keyboard.
Cannon exercise is a variation of exercise number four. And it's one of my favorites because it's so much fun to play and it's a really great workout for your hands. You'll start on the starting note and then reach up a sixth. Alternate between this and the next note and then drop down a third. Go up a second, drop down a third, and go up a second again. Pay close attention to the fingering and that'll help you remember which note to play next. If you're looking for even more tips and tricks for practicing Hannon, you'll want to check out this great video for lots of helpful hints. Exercise number six is very similar to exercise number five. This one is actually one of my favorite Hannon exercises that I've learned, as it's such a gentle warm up for your hands. Instead of working your way down by thirds like you did in exercise five, you'll simply alternate between the sixth and the descending notes to work your way back to the starting note. Again, watch the fingering to remind your fingers where to go. If you combine exercises four and five, you'll get hand in number seven. This exercise specifically strengthens fingers three, four, and five in each hand. You'll go up a third above the starting note and then go down a second. Do this again and then go up another third. Now simply go back down to the third above the starting note. If this sounds complicated, simply think about it in terms of the fingering numbers instead of intervals and you'll quickly get the hang of the pattern. Exercise 8 changes things up from the previous ones. This exercise strengthens all five fingers and really improves your flexibility and control. This exercise starts as an ascending arpeggio and then reintroduces the pattern of descending thirds and ascending seconds that we're familiar with from the preceding exercises. Watch the fingering closely as you play.
which hand and exercise do you enjoy playing the most? Tell me in the comments. Exercise number nine targets the fourth and fifth fingers and aims to improve your flexibility and accuracy with these typically less agile fingers. You're gonna start on C and then go up a third. Alternate between this note and the one above and then jump up another third. Go down a second and then reach up another third and go down a second again. Work through this really slowly until you get the pattern and then work on speeding it up. Exercise number 10 is described as a preparatory exercise for the trill with fingers 3 and 4. Now in most pieces, you won't actually need to play a trill with your 3rd and 4th fingers, as using fingers 2 and 3 is usually better. But this exercise is a good way to improve your dexterity in these two weaker fingers. You'll start with C, and then reach up a 6th and go down in a scale pattern until you reach E, which is the 3rd above C. Now alternate between the E and F twice. Simply repeat this pattern up the keyboard until your starting note is the second D above middle C, and then work your way down. little explanations and demonstrations of hand and exercises 1 through 10 were helpful for you. If this video helped you understand and play these exercises better, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future piano lessons and tips. If you want even more tips for practicing hand and effectively, don't miss this great video that's coming up in a few seconds. Happy piano playing!